Okay, we are going to find the absolute max and also the absolute min for this function here. So let's get to work. Find the derivative of this, we need to use the quotient rule. So let's go ahead and square the bottom. 1 plus t square, and then square that. And then we keep the bottom function here. So 1 plus t square. And we are going to multiply by the derivative of the top. The derivative of square root of t is 1 over 2 square root of t. And then we minus the top function, which is square root of t, and then we multiply by the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of t squared is 2t. So that's what we have. And before we set this equal to 0, let's simplify this a little bit. We see that we have a small fraction here, so let's multiply the top and bottom by this, which is the 2 square root of t, and then of course we do it right here as well. And uh, we are going to get the following. Take this times that, they will cancel, so we will just have 1 plus t squared. And then next, take this times that, well, let me just write down everything for you guys. First, we have a minus here, and then square root of t times 2t times 2 square root of t. Check this out. This times that is just t, right? So we have the 2 times 2, that's 4, and then this and that is t, but we do have another t here. So altogether it is 4t squared. So let me just write that down for you guys. And then over this right here, which is, let me put a 2 square root of t in the front, and then 1 plus t squared, and then we square that. Okay, that is what we have. And then of course on top we can simplify this a little bit. We can just subtract, so all in all we get 1 minus this and that, which is 3t squared over 2 square root of t times 1 plus t squared and then squared. Good, that's our derivative. And now we are going to find out where the derivative is equal to 0 first. So we set this to be 0. That means the top has to be 0. So we have 1 minus 3t squared is equal to 0. And then we can bring the 1 to the other side becomes negative 1. And then divide the, the negative 3 on both sides. So we get t squared equals 1 over 3, and then take the square root on both sides, and usually we have the plus or minus. But here, we cannot have negative number because originally we have square root of t. If t is negative, square root of a negative number, you know, it's not real, so we are not going to work out the negative. Therefore, our critical number from here, cn, is just that t is equal to square root of 1, which is just 1, and then square root of 3 on the bottom. I'm just going to keep like that. Okay, and then we also have to look at another critical number because here we have a denominator. We have to set this to be 0, and we see 2 square root of t times 1 plus t square square. When we make this equal to 0, we can find out where the derivative does not exist. And um, okay, we have 2 times square root of t, so this means that t has to be equal to 0, okay? And then if we set 1 plus t square, square equal to 0, and you see 1 plus t square is equal to 0, there's no solution because you see t square is equal to negative 1, so here it has no real solution. So we don't have to worry about this. And in fact, t is equal to 0 is a critical number, because this right here will make the derivative non-exist, and then the 0 is inside of the domain. Square root of 0 over 1 plus 0 squared is legitimate, so this is also a CN, technically speaking. Alright, so it's not so bad we have two CNs and then two end point. Okay, check the CNs first. Let's check 0 first. Uh, let's see. Here we have f of 0. This is nice. It's just square root of 0 over 1 plus 0 square, and that will be 0. Next, f of 1 over square root of 3. I'm just going to write it down like that. 1 over square root of 3. This right here looks like we have square root of 1 over square root of 3, which is a pretty crazy number. <laughs> and then over 1 plus 1 over square root of 3, and then we square that. Okay, and then for this one, I'm just going to work it out a little bit. 
Firstly, though, we see that square root of 1 is just 1, and then square root of square root is the fourth root, so I'm just going to keep it as the fourth root of 3. All right? And the reason for that is because when we have the square root, it's like the same as saying 1 half power. And then the square root inside, it's another 1 half power. And you see, when we have a power to a power, we can just multiply the powers, and we get 3 to the 1 over 4, and that's why it's the same as the fourth root. Alright, and then on the bottom, we have 1 plus, and this right here is just 1 over 3. And uh, let's go ahead and simplify this. And to do so, this right here is just the same as 4 over 3. So this is 1 over fourth root of 3 over 4 over 3. And then I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom by its reciprocal. So you will see, multiply this by 3 over 4. Multiply this by 3 over 4. This way, this and that cancel, this and that cancel. All right. And uh, all together, we get 3 over 4 times the fourth root of 3. All right. Okay. So that was the computation. And uh, two more numbers to check. Oh, look, we have 0. Okay, so that's pretty good. No, f of 2. So for the end point, I'll do this one in blue. f of 2. This right here is just going to be square root of 2 over 1 plus 2 square. And this is just square root of 2 over 5. Okay, so these are the numbers that we have. And uh, we know the absolute minimum, it will be 0. That's okay. But which one's bigger? Well, you can use a calculator and I will tell you this number right here is approximately... Let me just tell you, it is approximately 0 0.5698. So, uh, 7, all right? We don't need to put on too many digits. And this number here is approximately 0 0.28. So, this one wins. Therefore, <laughs> our absolute max is at x being this and then that's the absolute max so f of 1 over square root of 3 and uh, we have that and i'm not going to simplify the radical or rationalize the radical there's no answer in the back of the book so just follow my answer that would be the best <laughs> and then absolute min and then that would be f of 0 is equal to 0 and with all that we are done